Facts and News! Ow! We'll start with this. As tensions are running high involving the sanctions levied against Daniel Kinahan, his cohorts, and anyone associated with him, even tenuously, Bob Yalen, CEO of MTK Global, has officially resigned. MTK Global, who many people feel Daniel Kinahan is still associated with. People feel MTK Global is just a money laundering front for Daniel Kinahan. Even though then CEO Sarah Vaughn stated in 2017 that Daniel Kinahan is no longer involved with MTK Global. She subsequently stepped down from that position and Bob Yalen, he took her place. The same Bob Yalen that just handed in his letter of resignation. And his timing is impeccable. Just as the US government U.S. Department of Treasury levies sanctions against Daniel Kinahan, several of his family members, his cohorts, and some businesses he is tenuously associated with. All of a sudden, Bob Yalen decides to jump ship from MTK Global to Pro Bellum. Which to a lot of people is just another way of saying MTK Global. Which to a lot of people is just another way of saying Kinahan Cartel. Here on the channel, we talked about how many of MTK Global's fighters, fighters connected with MTK Global, just so happened to be migrating over to the fledgling company, promotional and management company based out of Dubai, Probellum. There are no sanctions levied against MTK Global or Probellum at this time. Though Bob Yalen deciding to jump ship, cross over to Probellum at this time, well, it could mean a few things. Shredding session, anyone? According to boxing scribe Stefan Mühlhausen, MTK Global is no more. On the heels of everything that's been going on, it seems that MTK Global as a company is about to be dissolved. That's according to Stefan Mühlhausen. We'll see if that news checks out. If it does, one way you can interpret it is they decided to dissolve that company before the U.S. Treasury and the U.S. government was able to give them a closer look, their books, and what they're up to. They decided to dissolve that company before any sanctions could be levied against them. For years now, there's been widespread speculation that Daniel Kinahan hasn't actually parted ways with the people over there at MTK Global and what Sarah Vaughn and Bob Yalen went on to say, you know, he's not connected with us anymore. It's bullshit. Nobody believes that. One way you can interpret this company potentially being no more, this company potentially being dissolved, one way you can interpret that is... They're covering their tracks. It's smart. I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't. They're covering their tracks. Although the sheer number of fighters, MTK Global fighters, that are now associated with Probellum. Well, that's gonna cause the same suspicions to arise. Bob Yalen going over there, that doesn't make it any better. Oh yeah, people are gonna be suspicious, but suspicions aren't a smoking gun, are they? It's not. And for those who might believe that Daniel Kinahan was in fact associated with both MTK Global and Probellum, is associated with Probellum, one way you can interpret all of this, Probellum's association, their emergence, is a means to buy Daniel and his buddies a little bit more time to refine the their methods, cover their tracks, and keep doing business. Because that's what it's all about. Making sure that the show goes on, even if the show going on is going on behind a curtain. Away from the prying eyes of box subscribers. Investigative journalists and John Law himself, the U.S. government, the Department of Treasury. Hey, maybe not Danny who realize he's got to keep a lower profile. No more photo ops with prominent athletes. Boxers, prominent ones, well-known ones that have big followings. No more of that. It's not really up to him anymore anyway. The U.S. government's not giving him much of a choice. After these sanctions have been levied, if you're seen in the company of Daniel Kinahan these days, you may come under harsh scrutiny. Harsher scrutiny than you would like. Than anybody would really. The official statement from MTK Global in reference to Bob Yalen's resignation reads as such. We regret to announce that Bob Yalen has today stepped down as CEO of MTK Global for personal reasons. We would like to thank him for all of his efforts on behalf of the business and his leadership of our team. Bob Yalen himself stated, I am incredibly proud of the success, MTK Global, and I feel privileged to have served as president and CEO since 2018. However, the pressure of the last few weeks has been particularly intense. I need to consider the impact on myself and my family. So after four years leading MTK, I think it's time for me to step aside and take on new challenges. And I can only imagine that these new challenges he's talking about is doing the same job at Probellum he was just doing at MTK. Yeah, that's the gist of it. It's not at all discreet. However, if Mulehausen's story checks out, and MTK is no more, well, you can't look at their books if their books don't exist, now can you? What are you gonna do, levy sanctions against the dissolved company? Mike tried to levy sanctions against Probellum, though who knows what, if anything, they've got on them. They've been at this for years, they might be at this many more. Before he fled to Dubai, when he was still in Ireland, 
They accused him of doing anything you can think of, anything you can name, and still he was never prosecuted in Ireland for any of the crimes he was accused of committing or being involved with. If they were going to get him... If they were going to get him, they should have got him in Ireland. Now what they want to do is make his buddies nervous and shake down anybody in association with him, in association with Daniel Kinahan. I don't know how much success they're going to have with that. In some ways, they are forcing him to go underground. Yeah, but if he does go underground, it'll be harder to pin the rap on him for anything. So obviously we had the situation last week when the US authorities announced that Daniel Kinahan was sanctioned. What was your relationship with him and what's your relationship going to be going forward? Um, I've just had a million questions about all this rubbish before. Um, but like I said to them, it's none of my business and I don't get involved in other people's business, so it doesn't really concern me. But, but was he involved at all in, in, in this fight? No, nope, no involvement. Uh, do you do you still speak to him? Is he still somebody that is close to you? W will you speak to him? Um, he's not my father, let's just say that. And obviously a lot has been made of the fact that you were pictured with him in, in February. Does that suggest that you are still close to him? Um, to be honest, I've never been close to anybody apart from my wife and my kids. So there we are. But, I mean, it's obviously a serious matter. I mean, the US... But again, it's none of my concern and none of my interest. But, but it was somebody that you had business dealings with. Did you regret being close to him? Um, like I say, none of my interest and none of my concern at all. I don't regret anything. Life's too short for regrets. But like I say, none of my business and none of my concern. Uh, and will you somebody have asked me about Ukraine recently. None of my concern or business. It's not nothing to do with me. I keep my own business to myself. But the difference between that and Ukraine is that obviously Daniel Kinahan is somebody that you've had a personal and business relationship Yeah, but I've also with. had a personal business relationship with Vladimir Klitschko, haven't I? Don't forget we made each other millions of dollars. But there you go. So it's the same, isn't it? No, no, I mean, it, it's slightly different because you don't have a personal involvement with the war in Ukraine, what is happening there, whether this is something that you have had a personal involvement with somebody that the US authorities okay. are saying And what do you want me to do about that? No, but I mean, I'm just asking you whether... And I've told you three times, it's nothing to do with me and I don't care. But it obviously was something that was to do with you in the past. No, it's never... What a man does in his own business is none of my concern. I'm a boxing man. I don't get involved in anybody's business at all. If you if you want done whatever you've done, I don't care what you do. It's none of my concern. I am only concerned about what I do. And I don't do anything apart from box. End of. And going forward, yeah. after having seen what the US authorities have said, will you be severing all ties with him? Um, you know, what the US have said, the US have said, and that's it. We have to listen to the government, and that's what we do. End of. Because I don't want to get in trouble with the US government, which I, I've never have been, and that's it. So you won't be dealing with him business-wise going forward? Um, I haven't done any dealing business with him in the last for, for a long time. Uh, I think there was a statement released in 2020, so that was the end of the business. The fight with Joshua didn't happen, and that was it. But Bob Arrow said that he'd made more than a million dollars from yeah, four I've seen of that. your fights. Yeah. So he was he was involved in those uh, fights. What Bob Arum does with his own money is Bob Arum's business. If he goes and spends it on gummy bears or cans of pop, I don't care what he does with it. He's got plenty to, to give out. So what Bob does with his own money ain't my concern, is it? So when you get paid your wages and you go spend it on whatever you spend it on, that's not my concern, is it? Because it's not my money. And just a final question going forward. You're, you're the heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah. You, you're a role model, an idol to millions of people around the world. Surely this is something that you need to distance yourself from. I think it's going to be a great fight on the night. And I'm not here to talk politics, war or religion with you. Uh, he's trying to probe for me to say something. Um, I'm not interested in other people's concerns. I'm not interested. Don't care. None of my business at all. I'm a boxing man and I've got a fight to think about. And that's enough said. Thank you very much. I won't be doing any more interviews with Sky. Thank you. Good night. To say that Tyson Fury was made quite visibly uncomfortable by this line of questioning and his association, whatever it was and whatever it still might be, to Daniel Kinahan, well, to say that he was made quite uncomfortable... Gee, thanks, Captain Obvious. I couldn't tell. You know what this felt like? This felt like vintage Tyson Fury. This felt like the Tyson Fury I remember from several years ago. Before he reinvented himself. Because that's what he did. Today's Tyson Fury is a lot more user-friendly than vintage Tyson Fury, circa 2014, 2015, making inflammatory comments about groups of people and skirting out of questions, difficult ones in association with things that he said. Here he is in 2022, still skirting out of questions. Is he still this mental health hero, this 
role model for anybody that's going through a hard time? Is he still all these things? He's rubbing elbows with a cartel leader. And he has been rubbing elbows with him for a long time, make no mistake. Whilst Tyson Fury was away from the world of boxing on his hiatus immediately after victory over Vladimir Klitschko when he ballooned to upwards of 300 pounds. There are images. During that two-year hiatus from the sport of boxing, he was rubbing elbows with Danny. At minimum, what we can deduce is that Tyson Fury's been rubbing elbows with Danny for a long time. A very long time. He may very well have severed ties to him now that the squeeze is on and the U.S. government is applying pressure. Yeah, maybe now. Well, the more attention this story gets, the more it brings to the surface that Tyson Fury's known this guy for a while. What's that do to his public image? The user-friendly Tyson Fury everyone's come to know and love. What, you think he might become a social pariah the way Danny's become a social pariah? History tends to repeat itself, doesn't it? Tyson Fury's been a social pariah before. Perhaps a lot of people forgot. But I didn't. I'm just wondering, what effect, if any... This line of questioning and this kind of attention, I'm just wondering what effect, if any, it might have on people's perceptions of Tyson Fury moving forward. You know, some people think Daniel Kinahan helped Tyson Fury cheat in a wilder fight. This entire fiasco, Tyson Fury's connection to Daniel Kinahan, has given rise to those conversations. And at minimum, I'll say this. For those that believe this conspiracy theory to be true, if it were true... That only proves that Deontay Wilder should have fought Anthony Joshua yep. or Dillian White yep. instead of dancing with the devil. Instead of fighting Tyson Fury. He's the guy who prioritized Tyson Fury over them. So whatever he got... Hey, he did it to himself. Not that I'm now opting for this conspiracy theory in light of recent events. I'm not. I think Deontay Wilder picked a cherry and it blew up in his face. That's all it is. Happens all the time. Any repercussions to Tyson Fury's public image as an athlete and some kind of a role model? He might skirt out of those, too, because he's talking about retiring. I know that a lot of people don't believe him. Just the other day, his dad, Big John Fury, he was dispelling the idea that Tyson Fury's candor about retirement... It's genuine. Serious. The situation has changed, though, hasn't it? You can ask him questions, and he'll give you open-ended answers. You can make him uncomfortable. You can squeeze him. Deny, deny, deflect. That's what I told you he'd do last week when they had that Zoom call. Go ahead and ask him. See what he says. What do you think he's gonna do? Tell you where the bodies are buried? <laughs> Get a fucking grip, man. From being a little tiny boy, I always said I'd be the heavyweight champion of the world. And guess what? I did it. So when you're the heavyweight champion of the world, stuff like this happens. But you know, it's been a long, hard journey, and it hasn't been all smooth sailing. It's been ups and downs. And we've had a fantastic ride. And now it's, uh, now this is the final farewell. It's, uh, I'm going out with a bang. The final farewell. Is this gonna be this? This is it. This is the end. Why is that? Because you're looking in great shape. You've been breaking records in yeah, camp. Yeah, There's yeah, so yeah. much for you to achieve if you want to become nah, undisputed. Nothing, there's nothing for me to achieve. Nothing. I've won every belt in the world to win. There is. I broke all records. No one of my era has won the Ring Magazine belt, only me. No one in my era has ever been lineal champion, only me. I've won every single belt there is to win in the sport. And I've, uh, I'm getting out healthy and in one piece. I'm not defeated. Come on. That's got to be worth a belt or a few quid on it. So no fight with Anthony Joshua? Nah, they've had the chances, that's sailed, gone. They've had so many chances to grow a pair and step in the ring and do battle with the Gypsy King and they didn't do it. For whatever reason, whether it was going to be money or belts or pride, they had their chance and now it's flew away. I'm sorry, but this is it. I don't know if you tune in now because you're never going to get to see Big GK in action again after this. This is it. This is why Tyson Fury really isn't everybody's cup of tea. This is why a lot of people feel he gets out of his comeuppance quite a bit. There's no accountability from this guy. He wants people to believe that somehow it was Anthony Joshua's fault that the fight between them didn't happen when it was his legal situation with Wilder. At least that's the cover story. That's why the fight between him and Anthony Joshua didn't happen. And before that, when he mounted his big comeback to the sport of boxing, he had the option of targeting Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder, and he chose Deontay Wilder. He did. They chose each other. Don't you remember while he was away, Anthony Joshua told him, get fit, you fat fuck. And to Tyson Fury's credit, he did eventually become match fit. But when he did, he didn't target Anthony Joshua. He targeted Deontay Wilder. He's been in a bubble with that guy ever since. Never since then, group of fanatics, group of fanboys have been blowing those victories out of proportion when Deontay Wilder's resume is even thinner than Tyson Fury's. Look, I'm not telling you that Fury's a bad boxer. Quite the opposite. I'm just telling you he's not everything he's made out to be. He beats Vlad and leaves the sport for like two years. Those two years he was rubbing elbows with old Danny Boy, by the way. Try to make it this Greek fucking tragedy. Oh, 
way. Somebody came by and shoved the coke up his nose, shoved the food down his throat. Give me a break. I think Tyson Fury's legacy, at least a part of it, is he's very good at making out like a bandit. He beat Vladimir Klitschko and skipped out on the rematch. Vladimir Klitschko executed his rematch clause, he exercised it, and Tyson Fury, quite conveniently, became mentally unfit. Stayed out of the sport long enough that Vladimir retired. Never got his rematch. All the while, he smacked talking Anthony Joshua so that when he comes back, he doesn't fight Anthony Joshua. He fights Deontay Wilder. Fights a guy two times. Immediately after Anthony Joshua's fight with Kubrat Pulev, it's Tyson Fury, from his home, who starts calling out Anthony Joshua by way of social media, only so they enter into negotiations. Which ultimately fizzled out due to Tyson Fury's legal woes with Deontay Wilder. Mediation arbitration that Bob Arum said wouldn't be an issue, wouldn't be a factor. Remember that Sunday before the mediator ruled. Tyson Fury himself, by way of his own social media, said the fight with Anthony Joshua, the undisputed heavyweight title fight, was a go. Only so that months later you can blame him for the fight not happening. The truth is, Tyson Fury is a very good boxer, skilled, one of the best in the world. There's no doubt about that, and I don't think that can be taken from him. But he's consistently inconsistent, and one of his many talents is how he just has a knack for making off like a bandit. At a time when his relationship with Daniel Kinahan is coming under close scrutiny, perhaps too close for comfort, he's talking about retiring. And there's reason enough there that maybe you should take it seriously, at least just a little you bit. think he wants to have to answer more questions like the questions the guy from Sky asked him? The longer this situation goes on between Daniel Kinahan and the U.S. government, those one him brought to justice, the longer that goes on, the more questions, just like those. Forget boxing scribes, investigative journalists are going to ask Tyson Fury about old Danny Boy. And they're not freelancers. They're getting paid to ask those questions by major news outlets, major news networks. This ain't Johnny B. Good that's got a YouTube channel. Carly Coldesac that's a boxing fan. Boxing scribes are often criticized for asking user-friendly questions, soft questions, but Tyson Fury... Well, you saw what they asked him. 